Launching into aviation history, the X-47 Bravo flies over Naval Air Station Patuxent River for the first time. Plus, two new products out of Lakehurst aim to keep the fleet flight ready. And students lift off with learning at this year's summer science camp. Welcome to this edition of Airwaves. I'm Michael Lauren Prue. I'm Major Justin Eggstaff. Thanks for joining us. An exciting moment in naval aviation history is the X-47 Bravo successfully completes its first flight at NAS Patuxent River. The unmanned aircraft flew over the Chesapeake Bay, reaching an altitude of 7,500 feet before landing safely at Patuxent River. The 35-minute flight is the latest step in preparing the aircraft for operation at sea. In order to be successful, in order to transition to the aircraft carrier, um, then the aircraft um, has to be here at the Tuxent River, working the, the arrested landings, working the catapults, and integrating with the carrier segment that we have here. Ability for it to operate here was really key. It's invigorating to see it finally fly. You know, we worked for several months getting to that, getting to that milestone, and it's exciting to finally see uh, what you've been working for for so long to come to fruition. The X-47 Bravo will perform arrested landings and catapult launches at Patuxent River prior to actual aircraft carrier testing scheduled for next year. The first flight of the X-47B at Patuxent River added a high note to the Unmanned Air Systems Media Day. Local and national media were invited to tour Patuxent River and Webster Field to learn more about unmanned aircraft and technology. The X-47B, BAMS D, and Fire Scout were just some of the aircraft on display. Program Executive Officer Rear Admiral Matt Winter spoke at the event, sharing his excitement about the future of naval aviation. And the operations of unmanned systems here at NAS Patuxent River, coincident with manned operations, is something that has not happened. So the first flight on Sunday was the first step to vetting out those processes and procedures, bringing the environment here at Pax River into a manned and unmanned system so that we can work together and Pax River to be on the forefront of delivering the historic capability to our warfighter. You can learn more about unmanned air systems by visiting the NAVAIR news page at www.navair.navy.mil forward slash news. Praise for KMAX at the latest Meet the Fleet event at NAS Patuxent River. Officers and Marines of the VMU Watchdogs recently returned from Afghanistan. This was the first deployment of unmanned cargo resupply in aviation history. The KMAX delivered supplies, including food, water, and gear, to remote areas of combat. This type of aerial delivery saves lives and equipment by keeping military convoys off the road and out of harm's way. The watchdogs took the opportunity to share this latest mission with NAVAIR engineers and discuss ways to improve the UAS in the future. The operator, his mission is to get the job done, and uh, the engineer's job is to build a, a safe, reliable product. Bringing the two together gains system efficiency, where as if you didn't have them together, it, maybe the system's not used as efficiently as it, it should be. The Cargo Resupply UAS Integrated Product Team recently received a SecNav Award for Excellence in Technology Transition for Bringing Technologies into Operational Use. A new tool is making aircraft inspections a little easier. The Common Video Boroscope set is a handheld device used to inspect engines and airframes for possible damage. Weighing less than 4 pounds, the device is 80% lighter than current inspection units and will allow crews to perform aircraft maintenance without taking the engine apart. According to the Lakehurst Integrated Product Team, the Common Unit is expected to save the Navy time and money. It's a game changer to me um, because now the fleet has basically one system that they could go to, and this ties in all the various aircraft out in the, that the fleet supports, F-18s, the B-22s, all the helos will be using this uh, common video ball scope set. No matter what platform or what engine or shore or float sailor goes to, it's going to be the same basic system. Uh, so they won't have to learn something brand new when they get to their next command. You can learn more about the common video boroscope set and its impact on the fleet by visiting the NAVAIR news page at www.navair.navy.mil forward slash news. A second type of common support equipment developed in Lakehurst is making its way to the fleet. Using commercial off-the-shelf technology, the aircraft wiring and support equipment team developed the fiber optics inspection set. The unit will help crews identify contaminated areas within fiber optic lines decreasing the number of aircraft needed depot level repair. 
So the equipment that gets turned in for being uh, faulty is very expensive. It takes a lot of money to, to turn around, and we don't want to have false turn-ins. So we also have a test set which checks the cable to make sure there's, besides being clean, that there's no breaks or damage to the cable. This isn't a nice-to-have application. This is something that if you're flying with fiber, you absolutely have to have this. It's going to ensure that your aircraft isn't down for extended periods of time. It's going to increase the, the efficiency of your maintenance, and it's going to save you dollars in the long run of not sending false WRAs back to the depot. The fiber optics inspection set is a common unit available to all platforms. Individual adapter sets, peculiar to each type of aircraft, will allow sailors ease of use in any inspection situation. Students blast off into learning at this year's summer science camp in China Lake. Now there are scientists and engineers volunteered to host the camp. Fifth and sixth grade students learned about airplane flight and had the chance to build and launch their own rockets. The camp encourages the love of science, technology, and engineering at an early age. We have 26 kids for this particular camp. All of them are very excited, um, a lot of energy, very engaged, and ask a lot of questions, which is always fun for us. I think it's just as exciting for the volunteers when the students are that engaged as it is for the kids. The kids are at an age right now where they're just really enthusiastic about learning different things. They're really enthusiastic about taking that knowledge and then going forward, building their rockets uh, and get, guessing which one's going to fly the highest and then going out and actually doing it. It's a lot of fun for them. This is the third year China Lake has hosted Summer Science Camp. That's it for this edition of Airwave. See you on the flight line.